John Beltran, Dave Urich back from Platte Valley High School in Kersey. The Bee Diggers have deferred, and they will kick off to begin this game. Platte Valley is coached by Michael DeWall. The assistants are Mike Danson, Troy Hoffman, Dan Gehring, Rob DeWall, Luke Allison, Luke Monroe. The Bee Diggers by Randy Dryce in his 10th year. The assistants are Ron Albo, Lance Schwint, Dick Creighton, Matt Manier, Ken Garcia, and David Cummings. And it looks like Jake Becker is back kicking off for the Bee Diggers. Two men flanked out at the 10-yard line as the opening kickoff is brought to you by Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance. Kick headed towards the sideline. It bounces, and it's picked up at the 10-yard line, running left and trying to find a seam across the 15, and then swallowed up at the 18 by Brandon Rutherford. Is Sterling Zender, a 6'2", 166-pound senior. Bee Diggers covered that very well on special teams. Once again, the opening kickoff brought to you by Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance, locally in Fort Morgan and Brush, offering home, health, auto, farm, business, and workers' compensation insurance. Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance, and immediately Platte Valley will set up first and 10 at their own 18-yard line out of the shotgun formation. Jordan Smith is the quarterback. One man to his right, two receivers split out to the left and right. Man in motion resetting on first down. There's the give off to the right side and stood up after a gain of two is Caleb Arnold at the 20-yard line. And it was Joe Rosenbrock getting in there, Dave, and making the play. Well, it's good to see you. He's ready to go. He's in the lineup, and and, uh, that's a good surprise. I didn't know if we'd see him there tonight, and he's already making an impact. Well, I mean, he's like missing two players on defense and offense. That's how good of a player he is. Second down and eight for Platte Valley at their own 20-yard line. Shotgun formation awaiting the snap. And there's the give. Handoff left side and hit at the line of scrimmage and maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage with the fullback, Seth Valadez, the 5'11", 190-pound senior, cleaned up by the right side. Levi Brenneman's part of that defensive line along with Dylan French. And it looks like Darren Wilt is in there as well. Connor Weiser. Joe Rosenbrock, of course, from his linebacker position. Kyle Muir on the outside. Tyson Larrick, C.J. Kukas, Derek Lynch, Brandon Rutherford, Bruce Melendez. That's the defense. Third and eight for the 20 and a shotgun. Back to throw is Smith. Pumping, looking down the middle. That pass is going to be incomplete. At the 50-yard line, well defended by Bruce Melendez, was the intended receiver, Caleb Arnold. And the Beat Diggers doing very well on Platte Valley's first possession. You know, they didn't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but the pressure they had was from the outside in. So they forced him to step up into the pocket and throw the football. And that was about a 25-yard post pattern that he tried to attempt. And it would, it would have been a difficult pass to, to complete because he had to throw it in between a corner and a safety there for Brush. They had that play covered pretty well. Ryan Smith, the punt at his own five-yard line. Shea Hansen at his own 46. A little bit of a high snap. Here comes the rush. He gets it off. A high end over end punt lands at the 48 yard line of brush and takes a Platte Valley roll inside the 40 to the 36. So that turned out pretty nice. A 44 yards with the B Diggers with decent field position to begin their first drive. Boy, they had some pressure on that kick too because they were coming right up the middle. There was two diggers that were jumping up in the air trying to block that thing and they were they were coming from the kind of angle that if uh, they didn't have good control, they would have ran right into the kicker, which could have been a disastrous penalty right off the bat. B. Dickers are quarterbacked by C.J. Kukas. Levi Brenneman's the big man on that offensive line, at least from last year's experience. He is the center. Lots of two-way players, including Dylan French. In the backfield, Tanner Morrow and Connor Weiser. Receiver split out to the right is Tony Guzman. First and 10 from the 36. Platte Valley already coming on a blitz. Hand off to Weiser running right. He lost the football. There's a flag down. And let's see, the B. Diggers recovered it. Tanner Moore recovered it back at the 34-yard line. Now let's see what the flag is all about. And it looked like he was stripped immediately. Oh, there's no flag. I thought I saw a flag out there, but maybe it was just something that was thrown down once the fumble, once the ball was on the ground. Yeah, the official saw that beanbag out there, and that's what it looked like it was. And like you said, Weiser had the football. He's running to the right side. It looked like there was even going to be some running room when the kids reached to grab the nose of the football and jerk it clean. Second and 12 from the 34-yard line. Platte Valley looking to blitz maybe again. In motion to the left is Melendez. And Kukas is going to hand it off tomorrow. Running left, a big hole across the 35 to the 40. Then he's tackled at the 41-yard line, but a gain of seven as the Platte Valley Broncos converge to make the play. Led by Sterling Zender from his defensive back position, but all of a sudden it sets up a reasonable third and five. Yeah, you're, you're hating that fumble there on first down, and luckily Brush was able to jump on it and defend it. 
So one of the things that was good is the notice that Platte Valley is sending some linebackers, but they're paying attention to where our fullback's going. So there were several linebackers that went over there to tackle Wiser, and that's what left Morrow wide open over here on the left side. Ramon Portese on that beat digger offensive line from his left guard position as well. Third and five from the 41. In motion to the left is Melendez. Kukas with a hard count. Hands off to Weiser. Hit behind the line. He's going to be down for a loss of two. A very stingy Platte Valley defense. Led over there by Chris Blackman. The 6'1", 209-pound senior defensive end. It'll be fourth down and a long six. And the beat diggers are going to have to play the field position game in a scoreless battle with 8.46 to go in the opening quarter. But you know they're winning that battle right now, and we got to just get. The, we need this good punt right here. We need a punt that's going to put the ball back down there in Platte Valley's hands inside their twenty. C.J. Kuka standing at his own twenty-six yard line, and might be Farenbrook, Trent Farenbrook, the sophomore, perfect snap. He gets it off, low line drive, end over end. It's fielded, and I don't know if that ball went off the Platte Valley Bronco. It is loose at the nineteen yard line, and the beat diggers dive for it. Do they have the football? And they do have the football. But it's pointing Platte Valley's way. Apparently the bead diggers either didn't recover or the ball was down as it was Clay Flunt, the senior 5'8", 140, who just misplayed that completely at the 30-yard line. I don't think the ball ever made contact with him. But nonetheless, Platte Valley starts at their own 17-yard line. Yeah, we got a nice kick there. It was one of those kicks that wasn't a spiral. It was going end over end sideways as it went down the field. And right when he tried to catch it, it bounced off his arm and rolled back to the middle of the field inside the 20 and and Platte Valley got lucky there jumping on that football. 49-yard punt. Yeah, hard to tell whether Flaunt actually made contact with the ball. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. Man in motion resetting. The quarterback is Jordan Smith. And Smith is going to keep the football running left. He's corralled behind the line of scrimmage. The beat diggers were there, led by Levi Brenneman. And then another beat digger getting up off the bottom of the pile. And they're playing some solid run defense. And that appeared to be Kyle Lynch. And it's second down and about 12 from the 15. The beat takers are looking good defensively. Yeah, if they didn't have a blitz going on there, those linebackers did a great job of reading it because everybody was in the backfield stopping that play where the quarterback took the snap, acted like he was going to hand it off, and then tried to run right up the middle behind him. Receivers to the left and right, second down and 12 for the 15. Smith off the shotgun formation is going to keep it himself, pitch it right, and that's going to be a huge loss back to around the 8-yard line. Boy, Tyson Larrick was there. To meet the halfback, and that is Caleb Arnold, 5'6", 136-pound junior. And the loss back to the nine, the loss of six yards. It'll be third down and 18. You know, that was like a triple option where they where they were in shotgun formation. He faked the dive over here to the right side, which is right here on the Platte Valley side of the football field. And then he pulled the football out decided to run out. But right there, Weiser was there to tackle the quarterback, so he had to pitch it. And by the time he pitched it, Lurick was all over it. Well, Plug Valley is 2-1, and one, but their strength this year has been defense. The offense has been very iffy. On third down and 17 from the nine-yard line. Again, two receivers out to the right. Now one free set to the backfield. And Smith is back to throw up the play action, pumping, looking, throwing down the left sideline. A man is out there. That pass is incomplete. The right hand of Caleb Bartle. He was open. At the 35-yard line, a very long pass across the way, but if it was an accurate pass, it would have been a first down. It sure would have. And what happened, our corner on that side, they had three receivers run out over there. There was somebody that ran about a 5-yard out, and then there was about a 10-yard out, and then there was Arnold going straight down the sideline, and, and our corner stepped up to cover the intermediate pattern and let the deep end go, and, and our big pick was just too far away to even come close to making the play on the ball. Ryan Smith, the punt, 5 yards deep. Jay Hansen at his own 46. Actually, it's a Platte Valley 46. Here comes the pressure. Gets it off. And that's a low end over end punt headed for the right sideline across the 40 to the 45. Takes a huge Platte Valley roll inside the 50 to the 49-yard line. So a punt of around 42 yards. And the beat digger still winning the battle of field position. But a nice roll there off the Jordan Smith or the uh, Ryan Smith punt. It's just a matter of time before the diggers zero in and figure out how far this kid's kicking the football. But now they lost about 15 yards on that, just not catching the ball and letting it roll. Cargill Meat Solutions takes as much pride in the community just as they do in the products they provide to their consumers. Cargill Meat Solutions, part of the KSIR B106 scholarship program, 634 to go in the opening quarter, no score from Kersey. John Beltran with Dave Urig. The backs are split. Tanner Marlin, Connor Weiser. A blitz coming for 
Platt Valley, the handoff right up the gut and across the 50 to the 48-yard line is Tanner Morrow before he was tackled by Ryan Smith, a linebacker at 6'1", 186, but it's a gain of three, and the Beavickers did a decent job of picking that up considering there were about seven men on the line. Or eight, actually, and what happened was Brush lined up in a double tight end formation with a wide flanker out there, so they're showing some power. Right at the last minute, Morrow shifted up into that halfback position, and they just ran that 24 dive over the right side, and you know Brush is hoping they can just run right past those blitzing linebackers, which could happen. Todd Valley doesn't have a free safety. Second and seven for the 48 handoff off left tackle. There's Weiser running strong for a couple of yards to the Platte Valley 46-yard line. Before 144 tackles the other Aaron Olson, the 6'2", 202-pound senior linebacker. Third down and five for the Brush Bee Diggers. You know, and this is doable for them, but they're going to have to come out and, and maybe open up a little bit and try to do something to keep those linebackers from blitzing, make those linebackers stay on it. Because Platte Valley's lining up in a 5-3 defense so they got plenty of guys up there to stop the the um, action of the attack. And when they're bringing those linebackers, it sure makes it tough to run the football. Tony Guzman is the receiver to the left. He's in motion to the right. Third and five for the Platte Valley, 46. Kukas, bootleg, running right. He's got no room. He's going to be hit in the backfield. It was read right perfectly. Platte Valley all over that play. And that's going to be a loss of around eight. Back to the 